You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live uncommon. Looking for some opportunities to serve this year, maybe this summer or maybe this fall? We have some opportunities to share with you. Joining me today, the Reverend Dr. Stephen Shave, Executive Director for LAMP. Dr. Shave. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. Andy, it's so good to be here in St. Louis with you again. Yeah, welcome back to St. Louis, eh? Thank you. <laughs> it's so much warmer. It's so much warmer. <laughs> you had snow last week, we had 90 degrees. Exactly. <laughs> so it's nice to see you in St. Louis for a little bit. Share with our listeners, what is the work of LAMP today? Yeah, so it's funny. We just had the 50th anniversary, and everywhere I go, everybody has my age category, okay? Sorry. But everybody (laughs) has these fond memories. They remember these bush pilots that were going out into the remote areas of Canada. You literally cannot reach these communities except for in these little bush pilot planes. And they remember the guys coming and telling them the stories, and they'd have their little offering box with a little red plane on the side. And, you know, we're trying to foster that, you know, enthusiasm of the old times of LAMP. And, you know, they continue to do the same exact thing for the last five decades, though. They want to bring hope to these isolated, alienated communities where, you know, we know the Indian reservations here in the United States. It's very similar with these reserves in Canada, the same kind of so- social, cultural issues and challenges that they face. And again, just to not have someone bring them this good news and to be the ones that can be those beautiful feet and to see the eyes of these kids light up when the missionaries arrive and they know that they're going to finally hear some words of hope and encouragement and that's that's what we've been about for the last 50 years so help us understand the 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 very people you're describing who are served by lamp who are these people in the remote areas that what what's life like for them and and how does lamp connect with them yeah i mean and and you wouldn't think in the year 2022 there are people that still have these kind of harsh living circumstances, you know, almost primitive, where they live on fish and berries. They have to chop wood to heat their homes. So there's so many tragedies still. Not only is there, you know, generational trauma that's happened because of uh, the cultural issues that have gone on, but just day-to-day life. You know, what happens when they don't have enough berries? What happens when they don't have good ice to do the fishing? You know, they have really, really rough winters. You know, we've had prayer requests from moms who had children that died in these house fires because they don't have heating like we do. They don't have homes like we do. We have families that, you know, don't have heat, food, you know, all those things that you just take for granted. You're running to the store and you're grabbing this, or you're, you know, just expecting to hit that switch and, you know, your heat turns on for you. All these things that we take for granted, they have those challenges every single day. And then again, on top of it, they're kind of cut off from the rest of the mm-hmm. world a lot of uh, a lot of the year. And so they have to have ice roads to be able to get out of town sometimes. So just imagine the the feeling of joy that you have when somebody comes and brings you the food supplies, brings you the warm clothes, brings you uh, a message of hope. And that's, that's the people that we serve. And they always amaze me. I mean, they're wonderful wonderful, amazing people. And because you and I, I think we would cave. <laughs> like, I can't live like this in, in, in that kind of a remote setting, but just strong, strong, loving, tight bonded communities and just wonderful people. Yeah. So LAMP connects with these communities, mm-hmm. with these people. How? Yeah. So that's probably our biggest asset. I mean, you can't just walk into these communities. But for the last five decades, LAMP has kept the door open. And so we have built lasting relationships. You know, so many of these communities, you know, that trust has been broken. That respect has been lost. But for LAMP over all of these years, the way that we serve in our communities in a way that is sacrificial and loving and, you know, 
built on that mutual respect, built on that mutual love for one another. We have been able to keep these relationships going for decades, and even COVID couldn't stop us. I mean, even during COVID, when we couldn't do the kinds of hands-on ministry that we wanted to do, we were still there with the supplies that were needed during the pandemic, the PPP and all the different things that people were getting. We were there helping to provide. We would not be able to go into the community, but we could sure show up at the edge of town, bring them everything they need, ask how they're doing. And then our volunteers and our team leaders did such an amazing job uh, keeping up with the elders of the community, keeping up with the people that they built relationships, just to check and see how things were doing. And obviously, you know, when, when COVID would go through a community, it was Mm. that much harder for them. But we did everything we could to keep that door open and to keep that relationship strong. So what are the opportunities to serve with CLAMP presently? Uh, Please. So obviously through COVID, you know, it was a challenge. And, you know, getting people from the U.S. up to Canada over the last couple of years has obviously been very difficult. We've had a couple mission teams now, so it's kind of nice. We've broken the ice. We did have a community that had a cry for help because they didn't have food supplies. They needed furniture for a homeless shelter that they had there during the winter. And we were able to send a team up, and, and that felt really good to be back in community doing incarnational ministry. The same thing, we had another community, the band council leader was actually on the national news pleading for help because they had, through all the COVID and isolation and everything else, they had a rash of suicides. They had suicide packs amongst their young adults there, and he was just begging for somebody to come and help. And so we were so blessed that we could get a team. We actually brought people up from Michigan to join some of our staff to be there on site to do a very intensive, shortened version of what we typically do, but just to be there and love on those kids and let them know that, you know, God cares about them. They're important. They have purpose. You know, they're filled with value, you know, in God's eyes. And just to give them that encouragement again that they hadn't heard for the last couple of years. So it was so wonderful to get back in community, break the ice again and know like, okay, we can do this. You know, we can send teams into communities. And we you know, abide by all the, all the protocols. You know, we, the the council leaders, you know, if they say this is what we expect for people that come to visit, we try to, again, be very respectful of that. But with that said, over the last couple of years with a lot of our teams, the kids that they would kind of cycle through, that cycle got broken. So yeah. we do have multiple teams now that are looking for volunteers. So typically we ask a congregation to sign up for at least three to five years and I'll tell you why in a minute, but it's for the sake of the kids because we don't ever want to have them expecting one of our teams to be there next summer for them and then they don't come. So we we ask for a commitment of like three to five years. But with that said, because of that large break, uh, a lot of teams then didn't continue to recruit over the last couple of years to make sure that they had enough people. So we're looking for volunteers that will come on board with another team. We will help you through the whole process. We have cross-cultural ministry modules that will teach you to be the best missionary you can be. We'll, you know, put you kind of through the application process and make sure we get you located in the right community with the right group. But yeah, we we really, I don't want to use it desperately, but we really do need volunteers to step up. I mean, this is, this is it. This is Jesus saying, go and make disciples to all nations, you know, the picture of revelation of every people, tribe, and language, you know, this is your opportunity to be that missionary that goes literally to the edges of the earth to serve. So we have plenty of room for people to come and join us, and we'll find you a spot. What are the stories from volunteers who have partnered with LAMP, who have served with LAMP, uh, about their experience volunteering? First and foremost, I would say Every single person that I've talked to has been more touched with the experience, a lifetime experience, than anything that they could have given to somebody else. Every time I hear that same thing, like, I got so much more out of going there than anything I could give, and it was a life-changing experience. And it's the love, it's, you know, again, the joy, and it's just the opportunity to serve. But yeah, it's just amazing when you hear the story. So like the story I was telling you about just showing up 
to this community. That van drives up the whole community. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, every kid, the adults, dogs are all running at you. Like, you know, they treat you like royalty, like a celebrity, you know, that's come to town. They love on you. The very first thing that little one's going to ask you when you get out of the van is, when are you coming back? Right. And what a great feeling that is to know that you're that wanted. That, that they want to hear the gospel so much that they're already excited to uh, talk about you coming back again. So every story that I've heard has been amazing. We all know some of the demographics, you know, in terms of fetal alcohol syndrome, addiction. You know, one of the issues is, you know, obviously drugs are coming even into remote locations. You know, all those stories of hopelessness and knowing that there's this really dark path that living in a remote community can take you down, but then to hear story after story of that path being changed to the light. That's the story that I love to hear, the impact that the gospel has on someone that's going down a very dark path to going to the path of salvation. And we've been kind of referring to that as our theme of reaching that final destination. We want to, you know, have every single soul have an eternal hope that leads them to that final destination of heaven. Those are the stories that are real. Those are the stories I hear every single day of the amazing experience it is to be a part of that kind of ministry, to see the eyes of those kids light up the minute you arrive, and the sadness when you have to go, but to know that one day we'll all be together, gathered around the throne, every tribe, every nation, every people, every language is just an incredible feeling. Who can volunteer with LAMP? Yeah, there is kind of a certain age limit where, Mm -hmm. you know, if you do have a little younger one, you know, that's, you know, less than an adult age, we do ask for some kind of chaperoning going on. But really, you know, we we encourage youth groups and young adult groups. And, you know, if you've already got a team of people at your congregation that's doing hosting a VBS this year, you know, you're a perfect candidate. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, if you like working with kids, if you like bringing the gospel to, you know, people that desperately need it, you're our people. So we we encourage folks yeah. that have that heart and want to work with uh, with children and even do some women's ministry and Bible studies and do some men's group things. And if sports is your thing, you know, we'll find you a place for that too. So if you want to work with some high school kids and do some sport camp kind of things, we'll find a spot for you. So, you know, that's what it is. If, you know, we have an application process for sure. I mean, we make sure that, you know, everyone's safe, but we certainly want to encourage anybody with that heart for mission to come and join us. The opportunities, where can we learn about the opportunities to serve this year? Yeah, absolutely. So if you go to our website, lampministry.org, you can find out everything about being a volunteer. You can hear even testimonials from people. You can see what the application process looks like. You can take a look at the map and, you know, there's some neat sounding names. Like, I just love to say Saskatoon, you know? It's like... <laughs> But you go to the map, you're like, hey, I want to go to Saskatoon. But yeah, it shows all the locations where we go. And uh, you can also give us a call. Our office number is 1-800-307-4036. That's 1-800-307-4036. And we would be more than happy to talk to you about the great, wonderful work that LAMP has been doing for the last 50 years. Very good. LampMinistry.org. You can find out more there as well. My guest today, the Reverend Dr. Stephen Shave, Executive Director for LAMP. Thank you so much for making some time for us today here on the Coffee Hour. Thank you, Andy, for having me. It's great to be here. I'm Andy Bates. 